Today we're going to be opening up this Camry transmission to see just what caused it to fail. You know they say Camrys are indestructible. Well apparently the owner of this guy got it stuck in the snow and burnt out this transmission completely. Taking a look around, not much to see here. We got our two transmission cooler lines, park neutral switch, the solenoid switches as well as two speed sensors and that's all that goes into this transmission. Hang coming around the front here, here you can see the torque converter which is your input, comes from the engine. It's going to bolt up over here and provide power that's going to go in. Over here is your output, this is a transaxle which means that you have the input in line with the output for front wheel drive. I'm pretty much going to go straight up and yole it, start taking off parts so we can see just what really burnt up inside. Now the drain plugs are already stripped out for me so I'm just going to go ahead and take off the pen. Oh, and there you can see some of the milkshake that's coming out of there. That doesn't look too good. Now, if you remember, I already did a video on removing this pan, changing the filter, and flushing this out. Link above if you didn't see that one. And I did find a lot of crumbs inside of here. You can see that milkshake doesn't look very good. It's all mixed up with stuff. And the magnets inside of here don't look that good either. So there's a lot of metal particles in here. I don't know what I was thinking trying to save this thing. All right, now I'm going to take off all the bolts holding the filter on. All right, let's pop this filter off. All right, so next up, we got to disconnect all these solenoids here. Now I can go ahead and remove all these 10 millimeter bolts to hold the valve body on. All right, let's pull off that valve body. Ooh. Anyways, here on the valve body, you can see this is the manual valve. And we've got all these accumulators over here, as well as your solenoids. We're going to open this up just now to see what it likes. Inside of here, you can see there's a couple of clutches in here and gears. And you can see here, these are all the holes where the transmission fluid is going to move inside of the transmission. Pressurize different solenoids and change your gears. Here, we've got the parking pole mechanism with the detents over here. And the shaft that's going to go to your shifter cable over here. Alright, so I'm going to start taking off the bell housing over here. There's a bunch of 12 millimeter bolts to go all the way around. Okay, it's starting to hail. Okay, got the big guns now. Got a big mess here, so I got my brother's old Canada 150 t-shirt. And we're going to sap that up. These t-shirts are usually pretty absorbent. And I'm also going to use my wife's old sweater here. He's not going to need that small size anytime soon. Alright, let's see if we can take off the cover. Here we are. I have to run to my brother's dresser downstairs to get some thermal underwear, his old work pants, and another sweater. These are very absorbent because transmission fluid tends to go everywhere when you open a transmission. You can never properly drain a transmission until you open it. All right, now with the front half of the transmission removed, you can take off the differential. These are just a simple open differential. There's no LSD or anything. It's a Camry after all. Inside of here we have the counter shaft and then the input main shaft over here. It looks like we have an oil pump here, so I'm gonna take off these 12 millimeters. Pull off this oil pump. Okay, a bunch of torques holding that on together. We'll open that just now. All right, next off we're gonna take off this piece, which is the input shaft. Can I already see what went wrong here? We've got a set of burnt clutches right over here. All right, quick lesson on how these clutches work. Essentially, you've got your input over here and your output over here. Right now, there's no hydraulic pressure, so they can rotate relative to each other. Once you apply hydraulic pressure through these little holes inside of here, the clutch inside of here is going to lock up, and these rings can no longer move, and therefore, your input and your output are now locked together. Let's see if we can pop this snap ring off. Take a look at the condition of these clutches here. Now these clutches consist of steel bands which are splined to the outside and then splined to this piece over here and then the friction material over here which is splined to this one over here. Essentially when they become all one piece they rotate together. However in this case it's completely burnt out and these friction clutches are completely black and they can no longer hold any friction when hydraulic pressure is applied to them. That's because the owner of the transmission was just revving this thing like crazy in the snow trying to get unstuck. Alright I'm going to flip this transmission over so we can move over to the other side. All right, so here we're looking at the driver's side of the transmission. I'm going to go ahead and remove all these 12 millimeter bolts that hold this cover on. All right, let's see how much more mess we can make here. And it looks like we got two oil feed lines over here that come from the transmission body that feed oil into these planetary gears here. All right, so just below here, I found a little bit more carnage. There's some more sludge and pieces of metal built up underneath here. And yep, this looks pretty bad. All right, now we can remove this planetary gear set. Oof. Wow, that is completely burnt up. All right, I found a little bit more carnage. This looks like bits of a solenoid. It's just coil winded up. I don't know what that's doing in here. You can see just how black it is inside of here on this clutch pack. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this snap ring out. And let's see if we can take this out now. Whew. That's another burnt up clutch pack there. 
Yep. Oh my goodness, this one has sludge inside. All right, so these three clutch packs here are kind of nestled together and I just took them apart. Here you can see the first part of that clutch pack from the back of the transmission. And let's pop out these clutches here to see the condition. You can see it's already pretty black. Whoa, it's completely black and burnt out. This stuff is completely done for. You can see this here is the friction clutches. They're actually supposed to have a little pattern on them to help them grip the steel when they're squished together, but it's completely smoothened out. All of these are completely burnt out, and this is why your transmission fluid would also seem burnt out. So you gotta watch out when you look for a used vehicle to check the transmission fluid. All right, looking inside of here, you can see we have some fragments of some sort of material, probably the friction material that was breaking down inside of here. Pop all that snap ring. Alrighty, so one more clutch set over here and once again you can see it's completely burnt out like, This thing is just smushed smushed so flat. It's squat. There's no surface that it would grip on You can see the friction material is actually rubbed off on the steel over here and these steels are actually stuck together I think they're supposed to come apart aren't they? It's supposed to be able to slide back and forth Wow, these are completely squished together and they're kind of in a conical shape. That's how bad this transmission was running. Hydraulic pressure was squishing this together and they were slipping and overheating. All the particles are coming apart here. This transmission is just literally toast. This one's also squashed into a conical shape and you can barely make out the diamond pattern that it's supposed to have in order to give its friction. It is so burnt out, look at this. Looking at the next piece over here, which is the cage that sits inside of that planetary gear. There's like sludge inside of here, but the sludge is actually not sludge. It's just hardened all the way up. It's just the friction material that's just burnt up. This is supposed to be a one-way sprag bearing. It still feels like it does move one way. It's not completely burnt up in there. Right, next up, let's pop this snap ring out of here. And this is supposed to be a thrust bearing. And it's completely flattened and squashed. Turn the transmission over back on this side here. You can see you've got these two giant sockets that you need a special tool to remove. So I'm going to go ahead and use my special tool to remove them. And there you go. I busted a nut. And the counter shaft on this side here has got an even more special nut on there. So we're going to go ahead and use our special tool. And that's also a very interesting looking busted nut. Alright, so here's where the differential would live. And over on this counter shaft here, you can see this would be your parking pole, which actually locks the transmission when you put it into park. So far, this Toyota transmission is so easy. You can just take it apart with screwdrivers. You don't need no circlip tool. And I can remove this planetary gear set. So there's a thrust washer over here. And then there's another set of sun gear over here. And I know you're supposed to use a puller on this, but I've got a socket on here. I'm just going to keep pounding it until something happens. Planetary gear system here. Even this planet carrier here in ring gear suffered a lot of burns from the fluid. All right, back over on this side, I'm gonna see if I can cut this bearing off so we can pull off this gear set. And I can take off that collar there. What I'm trying to do is to get this cage out over here, but it's actually held captive by this ring, which is pressed in here. That's responsible for controlling the hydraulic piston in behind here for the clutches. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start beating it out. And hopefully I can get it out it's just pressed into aluminum. All right, so after a lot of beating, I think I'm just going to break this thing out of here. Busted that piece. All right, and there's the piston we were looking for. That is a press fit onto this aluminum housing. There's a set of clutches that were sitting in here. These clutches are actually pretty good. All right, and the last piece to pull out of the transmission is this counter shaft here. Give it a good whack. Be able to get this sprag bearing out. And you can see there's an anti-rattle clip here. So here we've got the entire transmission disassembled. Let's take a look at some of the components. Starting here, the transmission case here, you can see is where the valve body would live. And that's going to direct hydraulic pressure through all these different little holes here, as well as important things like this clutch piston over here. Now this clutch piston is basically going to take hydraulic fluid which is going to be applied in this cavity over here and it's going to pop out a little bit and that's going to cause the clutches to lock up furthermore we've got this accumulator piston over here and that's just going to help with making the shifts a little bit smoother there's also a bunch of springs inside of here as well of course the inside of this housing is going to have these steel races here where the bearings are going to sit against the transmission housing Next up, we've got the transmission pump. Now, this is supposed to rotate with the torque converter, but this one seems a little locked up. Let's open this up. Here you can see the housing. We've got the inlet and outlet, where this part here attaches to the transmission casing to feed the rest of it the fluid. Here's what the oil pump looks like. You can see you've got an inlet and outlet over here. And just like any other oil pump, it just rotates like a gear, creating a low-pressure zone on one side and a high-pressure zone on the other side to create fluid flow. Taking a look at the valve body, here you can see it's all electronically controlled using these five solenoids over here and a manual switch over here. Its function is basically to direct the hydraulic fluid so it knows which one of these clutches to lock up and therefore create a 
gear ratio. Let's go ahead and pop off all these bolts here so we can have a closer look. I also notice here there's a little bit more carnage with some more sludge. All right, let's pop this off. Here's the gasket. Oh my goodness, this gasket is disintegrating. Take apart the first level and there's another steel gasket over here. And here we've got the second level. And as you can see, there's a bunch of valves over here that are controlled by these solenoids and these different pathways that have to overcome fluid pressure in order to be directed into the transmission casing and apply the correct clutch. I had already removed and cleaned these solenoids in an effort to try to save this transmission, but to no luck. And here you can see the transmission solenoids that go into this valve body in order to redirect that fluid. So here's that last counter shaft that we took out of the housing. Now these clutches are in good shape, so these likely power the higher gears, such as third, fourth, and fifth gear because we didn't have reverse or first gear and second gear was pretty slippery. Now I've done another video on how automatic transmissions work but here's a really quick recap. This is the counter shaft that came out of the transmission. This is the input here that was powered by that other shaft that had a bunch of burnt up clutches on it. This is the output here that goes to the differential. And inside of here we do have a planetary gear set. You can see if I pop this off here. And inside of here you can see we've got the internal gear which is called the ring gear. And then we've got these four little planet gears that sit inside of there called the planet gears which are connected to this planet carrier. So I can rotate this planet carrier inside of that ring gear. Furthermore, inside of these planet gears, we have the sun gear, which is this piece over here that sits in the middle, sort of like the sun sits between the planet. Now at the back here, if I hold a differential, which is actually the planet carrier steady, I can rotate the sun gear and you see the ring gear on the outside moves in the opposite direction. So by holding one of these steady, you can achieve different gear ratios and different directions and that's how transmissions work. Now in this particular case, we know this is the input and that's the output, which means we've got to hold the sun gear steady for this ratio. So I do that and I rotate the input over here. You can see the output rotates slightly slower looking at this gear over here than the input and that's giving us a underdrive ratio. So the real question is how do you hold one of these gears steady? Well, the other two are forming a gear ratio and the answer to that is these bands and clutches. In this case, you can see the clutch set has internal teeth over here on these friction bands that are going to be toothed to the sun gear. And then we have external teeth on these steel bands over here that are going to be splined to the transmission. Now you can see this band and clutch set goes by friction disc, then a metal disc, then a friction disc, and they repeat themselves all throughout. And this becomes an entire set that sits on the back here in order to stop that sun gear from rotating. Now normally these bands and clutches are rotating in transmission fluid, minding their own business until pressure is applied to them to squeeze them together using one of these pistons. In a normal setting, that's going to cause one of your planetary gear sets to lock up and change your transmission gear. However, because these are friction discs and steel bands and they're subjected to different pressures, this is a major wear point on a transmission, especially if it's not being driven or maintained properly. Now here we come to the real reason why these transmissions failed and that's because the stupid owners don't know how to operate them properly. Now in this case the vehicle got stuck in snow and the owner I'm sure must have been revving the engine really really fast, slamming it into reverse, trying to rock the vehicle back and forth to get it unstuck from the snow. And the vehicle was a 2006 Toyota Camry V6. The transmissions are known to hold up that well. Although it had 360,000 kilometers on it, this is not due to just natural causes and wear over mileage. This is definitely a wear that happened pretty much over a couple of minutes stuck in the snow. Now if you remember the vehicle had no reverse, it really didn't want to go into first gear. And if it made to second, it was pretty jerky and slippery. Third, fourth and fifth don't usually have enough time to wear down in situations like this. Here's a problem. When you're revving your engine and gear really, really fast for a long period of time, the first issue really is heat. A lot of these clutches are going to be moving around in fluid and when you're moving them excessively fast, applying them and unapplying them really, really fast, it's going to start to heat up your vehicle is not really moving throughout the air so the transmission cooler could do its job and you're going to overheat your transmission i do remember scanning the codes and there was an overheat code in this transmission now the other thing is as you're rocking your vehicle back and forth your clutches are spinning in one direction then you suddenly apply this piston to stop those clutches and you're going to end up with all of these deposits inside of here from the clutch material as it suddenly tries to stop that spinning clutch and hold it steady so that you can go in reverse and here's another clutch pack that was on its way out you can see it's pretty smoked but they haven't fused together yet. This here was the one that fused together and I had to chip it apart. You can even see it kind of has a bend to it. It's not supposed to bend, it's supposed to be flat and it's actually become so brittle. And this is what it looks like right now. You can see all the deposits from the friction material on here. Actually, these are two pieces that are stuck together. So here you can see what it's supposed to look like. You've got a friction disc and then a nice clean steel plate. And here's the piece that's fused together. The friction piece is actually here on the inside. And on the outside here is the steel piece. So I can't get these two to unfuse and that means that you're always gonna have a clutch on situation with whatever's attached to this and attached to the outside. And that means if you can't unapply this clutch, 
but your vehicle is not going to really want to move anywhere. It should be nice and loose so that fluid can flow between there when the clutch is not applied. Now you might be wondering is it worth rebuilding this transmission? Well with how popular these cars are and because the transmissions don't really fail that much it's pretty easy to find a used one and swap it in which is what I did for this vehicle. And that's pretty much a wrap on the teardown of a U151 transmission. Now if you ever find yourself stuck in the snow like this guy don't rev the engine out or rock it back and forth. Instead find some other mechanical means like installing zip ties on your tires or installing a winch on your Corolla. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more failures just like this one.